thinking big. Now, I know a lot of people talk about this concept, but how do we think big? It's been, of course, overused. People say, you just gotta think bigger. You just gotta think bigger. But how do we think bigger? What are the practical steps to it? I wanna talk about how sometimes we don't just think big enough when it comes to our business. What's up, Travelers? Prince Nick's coming to you from the Cineverse. I'm out here at the River Oak Shopping Center, and today I wanna to talk about thinking big or playing the bigger game. Now, I wanna talk about how sometimes in business we don't think big enough, sometimes in life we don't think big enough, and what's some of the things that actually stop us from thinking big. So let's get right into it. So I firstly want to talk about this in terms of thinking big when it comes to your business. So what I mean by this, what, everybody says they're thinking big, right? I want to be represented on every country in the entire world. I want to be all across America. I want to be represented in 140 cities. I want my product everywhere. And a lot of people think that's thinking big. But the funny thing about this is a lot of companies have actually rise to this level and then they faded in the long run. What happened here? What's the difference between the companies that tend to last longer and the companies that tend to just go out over a couple of years. And I'll tell you the difference is thinking big or playing the bigger game. So what's the bigger game? Let's, let's take a company like Walmart or even a Disney or some of the more visionary companies. And what's the difference? Why do they last longer? Because they have a vision that's bigger than product or scale or being represented in all these different countries. They have, a, they have something that they're going for that creates more impact. See, a big vision creates more impact. And if you're not creating the type of passion or type of momentum you want, it's probably a result of you not having a big enough vision. So what's the difference between a vision that's small and a vision that's large? And of course, remember, I'm talking about impact here. So impact, for example, is something that really changes the way an industry or the world operates. So if you think, take Walmart, for example, Walmart changed the way discount retailers operate by coming in and changing that entire industry, Walmart became a visionary company. What about Disney? They changed the way that we experience theme parks or customer service. All these things led to them being visionary businesses. But it didn't start just by, oh, well, they came out and said, I'm a visionary or one person. It came with a vision. Let's take this example. Say you say you want to create a visionary business. And you start off and your vision is you have some type of product. Or say you're like a fitness person or anything. Insert any business here. And you say, you know what, I want to train this many people. Or I want to be somebody who does workouts, for example. Now that you said you're gonna set out and do workouts, you start, you start off doing that. But what's happened here? Why is this such a limitation? Because if you start with a vision that's small, like saying just doing workouts, well then you're confined, and that's what your business comes to be defined by, is that, oh, you're just the person who does workouts. But what if I wanna take it to the next level? Well, the vision's not big enough to support that. So let's take that same vision and say, I wanna help people become them, their best selves by reaching a higher level in fitness, in health, in life, or whatever. Now your vision has become bigger. So now your vision can expand to doing self-help. It can expand to doing nutrition, doing workout, anything that helps people reach that higher level of potential. So this is what I talk about in playing the bigger game or having a high level vision. That's what I'm saying. High level vision is something that's higher than just, oh, monetary things or things that are related to scale. It's actually impact. And it doesn't have to necessarily be some multinational corporation that's worth billions of dollars. Because, of course, we've seen charities that have created massive impact. And what you say, those companies are not visionary because they haven't uh, accumulated a $25 billion valuation or something like that. No, you wouldn't. So those companies are still visionary. And it's because the impact they chose to create. But this also boils me down to my next point. What about in life in general? How do we become visionary in our life, to say? And the big thing is, what does your life mean? I always talk to people and they say, you know, when I say, why are you doing what you're doing? Or why do you want to get up and work? Or any of these things, they always say, well, you know, I want to make my mother proud. Or my family's always done it this way. Or that's what everybody else does. But they really don't have any passion because they have no vision for their life. And I always say, what does it all mean? What does it all mean to you? I mean, think about it at the end of the day. At the end of your life, when you're sitting there, and you ask yourself, what does this all mean to me? You're the only one who sets the definition. And if you set the definition that somebody else sets, you just have no passion for your life. So if your own life, it may be to discover what's possible in life, to experience certain experiences. And this is the same thing as business as it is in life. If you don't have any passion, anything you're going for in life, of course, you're not going to be passionate about it. So you can't be living for other people because that's what causes you to stay the same. That's what causes you to limit yourself. Don't live for your parents. Don't live for your friends. Don't live for your family. Take time to understand and cultivate 
why you want to do something. And this is what we call having strong vision or strong standards. I've actually talked about standards before and I'll leave a link above so you can check that video out. But lastly, I want to talk about one of the biggest reasons why we don't think big or we don't want to play the bigger game. Now, I use an example that happened recently with a company I'm working with, and of course you know them, and I've mentioned them often. That's the InCrowd, and that's Willpower's company, the Nightlife Architect. And um, we started off thinking about how could we innovate in nightlife. And one of the things we came up with is an influencer conference. Now, this is basically a conference where we get everybody together, people who are impactful in the city of Houston, and we bring them together to ask them, you know, what do you want? What do you want to see? Instead of just trying to throw something out there in the dark and say, well, we're just going to give you something, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But we decided, hey, let's open up a dialogue. But this brings me to the story of the actual night of the influencer conference. Now, we came in, and at the start of the conference, it literally was two people there. Will had actually, he was actually in the other part of the compound, because it took place at the Music World compound in Houston. And he was at another part of the compound, and then he was, uh, I, he asked me, he said, you know, what's it looking like? And I told him, well, it's two people in there. And of course you could get rattled and you get nervous by something like this and you could say, well, you know, it looks like it's going to fail. It looks like it's going to fail. We never should have attempted this. We never should have tried to do something this ambitious. So I looked at Will and he told me, you know what? It doesn't matter if nobody shows up. I'm still going to go out there and do what we plan to do. And I looked at him at that time and I said, you know, that's exactly, that's exactly the type of attitude we need. Because everything you do may not always succeed. And this is one of the reasons people are scared to play the bigger game. So we walk across to Music World. We cross, well, from Music World, the Rice Mansion, all the way to the house of Darion, because it's multiple places on the compound. So when we get into the door, we're walking up. It's quiet in the middle. It's just that you can feel the anticipation growing. Because keep in mind, I hadn't been back to the house of Darion, and there was literally two people there when I left. So we walked in. We look at each other and it's like, here it is, let's do it. Let's do what, we, let, what, what's, do what we set out to do. We open the door, it's slow. You can feel the AC just rush over your body. And I'm thinking to myself, honestly, like I can't believe that all these people that we invited or reached out to didn't show up. But when we opened the door, there was a surprise. The room was completely packed. Now, of course, this was a gamble, but the gamble ended up paying off. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying playing the bigger game. It's harder sometimes to play the bigger game, and this is why a lot of people fear doing it. But what's really safer in the long term? Is it safer to try to just make money or try to squeeze the most out of people and they don't want to come back and become return customers? Or is it smarter to play the bigger game and build something long term? After that conference, we got a bunch of feedback, a bunch of people were really interested in the actual idea of the night. And all these people want to come because it's something different because we chose to play the bigger game. And that's what I want you to do. So this is the first time I've ever done this, but I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you if you haven't started a business or you're starting a business, think about instead of what type of monetary gain or what type of scale you can get to, how can you create more impact? Or more specifically, how can you play the bigger game? And in your own personal life, do the same thing. What do you want? What type of impact do you want to create? Not just on people, but also on yourself. What type of life do you want to live? What type of experiences do you want to have? And this is how we get to the visionary level. So I challenge you to do that. And also, if you want to, you can leave me a comment below. Um, just one line statement talking about how you're going to choose to play the bigger game. So I just wanted to talk about this, why playing the bigger game is important. Why trying to get to that next level requires you to do, have put in a little bit more effort and think a little bigger. And finally, I want to talk about why people don't sometimes play the bigger game. Of course it's harder, but playing the bigger game in the long run actually is easier because you won't have to try as hard to maintain those relationships or those customers that you've built. So, as usual, if you want to hear me discuss anything on this video blog, please send me or leave me a comment below. I, I read all the comments, I'll definitely get back to you, and I'd love to discuss anything you, you, you guys would like to talk about. Secondly, like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.